Hello there. Thank you so much for coming by. My name is Carmen Lindsay and today we're going to talk about the easiest and the only way to discover your true identity and trust me, it's going to be a lot of fun. Maybe you're questioning your gender or perhaps your race or ethnicity is a source of conflict or confusion. Maybe you're having trouble fitting in with others and not really sure how to act. Some of you don't even like the way you look and you're not sure what to do about it. Maybe you are being pressured to do things or act a certain way and you just don't know if it's you. Well, if any of these things sound like something you're dealing with, this video is for you. But even if you're not going through any of these things, I hope that you will thoughtfully consider sharing this critical message to someone who might be. Knowing who you are and discovering your true identity is really the greatest gift you can give yourself. Not knowing it will lead to frustration, anger, confusion, depression, and ultimately destruction. I'm going to give you simple answers to start helping you with all of that. So buckle up, here we go. Today I want to share with you who God says you are. And that's the perspective you have to have because He's the one who created you. So I would encourage you to stop trying to understand who you are by looking to someone else or by how you feel or even by your past experiences, however good or bad they were. You cannot let those things define who you are. The only genuine way to find out what something really is and what it's for is to consult the manufacturer. Well, that's God. And here's the very good news. He not only created you, but he also loves you more than anyone else. So we can trust what he says. Who are you really? What's your true identity? Well, you're this. That's right, you're an orange. I mean, for purposes of our discussion, you're an orange, okay? Trust me, it'll make sense, but for now, just imagine you're an orange. So good, you're working with me. So what is an orange? Is it this part, the peeling? Well. Yeah, but no. Okay, so is an orange this part? The meat, the part you eat? Yeah, but it's not just that. Because there's these little guys, the seeds. So which part is the orange? Yeah, exactly, all of it. And it's the same thing with you. You are made of three different parts and if you don't have a good grasp of that, you will never know your true identity. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus comes again. So you have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Your soul is your mind, your thoughts, and will, and emotions. Your body is this thing, the part that you can touch, the part that interacts with the physical world. And your spirit is, well, we'll get to that in just a second. And here's the key to this whole thing. There is a hierarchy. Some parts are in fact more important than others. So let's break this down. Your body is like the peeling of the orange. And what do you do after you peel it? Exactly, you throw it away. Does it serve a purpose? Sure, it protects it, it keeps it from drying out. Maybe you zest a tiny bit for cooking, but it's not the part you eat. You don't taste it, it goes in the trash. But even if you did eat it, it wouldn't satisfy you. It's bitter. So here's the important takeaway. It is the least important part of the orange. Yet young people today are being told that your flesh, your body is the most important part of you. And that is a lie from the pit of hell itself. You are being deceived into thinking that your identity is found in your body, your gender, your race. Yet that is actually the least important part of you. People are marching and protesting and placing their entire focus on this flesh part, the part that gets thrown away when you die, the most insignificant part of you. And the result, bitterness. I guarantee you that if you think your identity is found in your gender, your skin color, race, or ethnicity, your life is going to be wasted. You will be angry, depressed, and frustrated because you don't know who you are. The Bible says if you live according to the flesh, you will die. And no wonder, right? Because your life is being spent looking down at your anatomy and skin, the lowest parts of you. 
Incidentally, that's why our country and society is in such a mess and backwards right now. Decision making is being focused on the wrong thing. Our government and companies are placing the greatest importance on the weakest parts. Don't believe the hype, please. Okay, so what's the next part of the orange? The part you eat, the meat. You let the sweetness marinate in your mouth. You let its juices refresh and hydrate your body. Is it important? Yes. This is the part that is made to replenish nutrients your body needs. This part, for our illustration, represents our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. Our soul allows us to be social beings, to have healthy relationships with ourselves and others around us. This is our ability to make decisions. This is our character. The Bible says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be healthy even as your soul prospers. Intuitively, we know this part. Our soul, our mind, will, and emotions is more important than our physical body. That's why the world applauded and agreed to the words of Dr. King when he said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. We understand that character is more significant in life than skin pigmentation. It's understanding that one's thought life is more important than the color of someone's eyes, for example. Friends, when it comes to discovering who you are and your identity, your soul is vastly more important than your body and flesh. But still, that is not who you are. There's one more part, and man, we really tend to overlook it. The seeds. The seeds, the seeds. In the natural, it's the smallest and seemingly most insignificant. But in reality, it's just the opposite. The life is in the seed. This represents your spirit. That's where the living part of the fruit is. That's where the DNA is. The DNA is the creative power, the blueprint, the drawing plans for how to build and who you are. My friend, your life is in the seed, in your spirit. Are you hearing me? Your life is in the seed and nowhere else. Who you are, you're a spirit. Yes, you have a soul and you live in a body, but who you are at its core is a spiritual being. So your life, your identity, it's not in your mind. Psalm 94 11 says, the Lord knows the thoughts of a man that they are mere breath, vain, empty, and futile. Your identity, your life, and who you are is not even in your heart. A lot of people say, follow your heart as a path to self-discovery. No, that's a lie. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Man, can you just drop me an orange emoji if you're tracking with me right now? Okay, think about it. I just peeled an orange the other day and broke it up into pieces. I didn't finish eating it and I came back just a couple hours later and guess what? Yeah, it was all dried up. It was nasty. I had to throw it away. Even the meat, as good as it is, doesn't last long. But the seeds, ah, oh, the seeds, they can last days, weeks, months, years. Some seeds, if stored well, can last for centuries. Are the seeds then the most important? Absolutely. You eat an orange and you're hungry the next hour, but the seeds, you plant one in what? It could grow into an entire tree and produce hundreds and thousands of seeds. And those seeds can be planted into an orchard and last for hundreds of years, feeding countless individuals, including not just you today, but your children, your grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. My friend, your life is in the seed, your spirit. That is who you really are. And if you are not in tune each day with your spirit, you are not living your true life. You are not walking in the person you are created to be. Another way of saying that is, you're dying. So here's the big kicker. Here's the ultimate life question. How does your spirit come alive? There's only one way, and it is found in Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And that makes sense, right? Jesus is the Son of God. He's the Creator. Check this verse out. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope 
encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Did you get the first part of that? Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us. You have a Father and a Savior who loves you and they have given you hope and encouragement and grace. That is favor and goodness that you don't deserve and we haven't earned. When you are saved by Jesus, boom, your spirit comes alive and you are connected again with your Father, who the Bible says is a spirit. The Bible says that we all turned away from God and that led to your death. But you're like, I'm not dead. That's because you're thinking of your body and your soul. You're thinking of the feelings. Remember, we're talking about identity. Who you really were is dead apart from Jesus Christ. But once you have Jesus' life inside of you, you are alive. And that is who you are, a new creation. You are a child of God. You were created to be with your heavenly Father in the kingdom of Christ Jesus. And within your spirit, he places his spirit and you have a relationship with him. You have a home and he begins to speak to you through his word, what he has for you, what his purpose is for you and why you were made the way you were made. He begins to tell you why he made you the gender he made you. He tells you what he has uniquely gifted you to do. And best of all, he begins to tell you that you are unconditionally loved that he has lavished good things upon you and has great things for you and it has nothing to do with what you have done. You don't have to earn his love. He loves you because it is his nature. He is love and created you for love. The world system and popular culture will try to convince you that you could find your life and identity somewhere else in some other way that your identity is found in obtaining enough money or fame or from developing your intellect or trying to derive your identity from sports, music, food, being in a relationship, from being popular or good looking anywhere else, but you won't because you can't because your true identity is in the spirit and Jesus is the author. The Bible says in Hebrews, how much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? So what does that mean? It means your identity, who you really were created to be is a son and daughter of God, to have God as your father. Doesn't matter how bad and evil your earthly father is, doesn't matter if you know him or not. What is important is that you know your heavenly father as a loving father and that is priceless. And there is your acceptance. That's where you fit. That's what matters most. No matter how much you have been rejected by others, doesn't matter. You stay thoughtful of the fact that your Father in heaven is passionately in love with you and in Christ you are completely forgiven and blessed and you stay there day and night. And so your good, good Father is encouraging you, don't give up. You are fearfully and wonderfully made just how you were born in the anatomy God gave you. You are wonderful, beautiful, marvelous. Forget the cruel words that have been spoken to you. Forget the wrongs that have been done to you. Get that deep into your spirit and rehearse that daily. The Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father loves you. God loved you so much he sent his son to pay the full penalty for our sins. That is what you need to focus on when it comes to your identity. Quit looking down and look up. Your identity, your life is in the spirit. Man, I hope you're getting this. Okay, so let me close with this question. How do you see yourself? What do you identify as? Female, male, trans, black, Latino, Russian, an immigrant, Republican, progressive, poor, rich? If you do, you have lost your identity. You don't know who you are. Your identity is none of these things. Focusing on the flesh, race and gender, and all the externals will never work because that is not the essence of who you are. Remember, you are a spirit made in the image of God. Quit reducing yourself to the lowest part of you. Look up, you are God's creation. And if in Christ, the loving God and creator of the universe has become your father, you're not an orphan, you have a home. You are loved and cherished and cared for in his kingdom, and you are not of this world. 
Well, we're out of time. Thank you so much for staying with me to the end. If you're still here, can you drop me an orange emoji? And if you want, tell me if God spoke to you during this message. Please consider smacking that subscribe button below and join the journey as we go deeper. It really helps get our message out to more people. And if you can, a simple thumbs up or a comment below really helps those algorithms. So if you liked it, like it. I'll see you shortly. Now go be the orange, live the orange, love the orange, be the orange. I'm just joking, you're not an orange, come on. We just went over that. You can, you can never be an orange. I mean, it doesn't even make sense, right? A fruit, I mean, you can't be a fruit. You can be fruity, maybe too many fruit.